it going, folks? We're here at Pastor Bassett picking up nice coffee on this hot day. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Electric City Creative TV. Alright, so first things first, we've got a profile of a local young poet, 18 years old, Anissa Keith. She's doing great things at the local poetry slams and bringing you some great words. Ever since November. Yeah, I wrote a little sophomore year, but I was too heavy into metaphors, so I quit. And then it kind of stayed pent up inside of me and it needed to come out. November. <laughs> yeah, but it was terrible metaphors. They weren't even good metaphors. And I'd read over them, and I'd just get sick of it. Figured writing wasn't cut out for me. So I stopped. So, so what changed your mind? I went to a poetry slam, and that night I stayed up till 2 in the morning. <laughs> Uh, writing about stuff that was on my mind and I felt a lot better afterwards. T.S. Eliot for sure. I also get something from like how Socrates does the whole dialogue writing. I haven't been able to incorporate that yet but I still draw inspiration. Seen of Writers in Great Falls, I don't think I've seen all of it yet. I know that there's a poetry underground but it's not really underground anymore. But what I have seen I really do like and I do hope it continues to grow. I keep telling all my friends about it. I can't shut up about it, actually. But. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to be writing in college, but I don't plan on stopping writing like I did in the past. My plans are to just not quit, but I don't necessarily know where I'm going yet. Jazz! I'd really like to see jazz. Oh. I haven't seen that yet here. So if we can get jazz here, I like that a lot. And uh, I don't know, saxophone on the street corners downtown. I'd like that too. I don't know. <laughs> Stuff that's beyond my kind of medium, I'd really like to see a more variety of that, of the arts. I watched her smoke. I watched her close her eyes and inhale like each breath was the first she had ever taken. Upon exhaling, the tumult of blue would fly from her mouth as if it was escaping from the prison of her ribs. I'm sure if I was to ask her, she would say it was true. She would make art out of the air. The tumult of blue would travel upwards in its graceful fashion, and amidst the smoke rings, they would form into a picture of anything that she would hope to be. And upon fading, she would smile and say it was like design. We would watch the smoke rise above us, like it does in church, as a symbol of prayers rising to heaven. But with her, it wasn't cries to God, but a whisper of anguish for the life that made her grow up when she was small and cut just a little bit deeper than she did. She would watch me as I watched her in my awe, like it was the first time that I had seen anything even close to the likes of a cigarette. And it was. She smoked with eloquence. I had never seen a vice look like a savior, but she made it look like it was a religion and each breath was bringing her closer to the God that would explain the meaning behind all the terrible that had ever happened. She smoked. I watched. And I couldn't help but wonder, what type of magic makes dying so attractive? So we're here at Machinery Row. We've got the patio outside. That's where we hold various things like Magnificent Seven. That's where a lot of the time you'll find Patty Hearst performing. She's our next profile, so check out the interview with Patty Hearst and her special performance in a local grocery store. I started playing music uh, when I was about eight years old. I started taking piano lessons. Uh, I played piano for three, four years and uh, I took flute in, oh goodness, third, fourth, fourth and fifth grade and uh, picked up the guitar after that. I told my mom I'd wanted a bass and that wasn't gonna happen right away because they're not they're not free <laughs> and so she told me if I could play the guitar that was sitting on the wall then she'd buy me one and I ended up falling in love with the guitar which is silly now looking back on it because I'm a horrible guitar player <laughs> but uh, I don't know I've always I've always kind of been into music when I was younger I did theater performances and I did uh, uh, different choir things and uh, I've always just kind of had a really good supportive family who's always been 
there and supports everything that I've done musically. So it's, it's made a big difference. Um, a lot of my biggest influences, uh, well, I don't know, they're, they're really spread out on the board. And I think that's what makes my music style the way, what it is. Uh, some of my biggest influences are Johnny Cash and Etta James, Susie and the Banshees, Fiona Apple, old school Snoop Dogg. Like, I don't know, it's, it's across the board, really. I love it all. It's always, it's all had a big, big influence on what I play now. My mom raised me up on really good tunes. She used to play the squirrel nut zippers while she did the dishes, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I lucked out. <laughs> interesting I didn't think that Great Falls would have the music scene that it does and it's a nice tight-knit group and it's, it's pretty cool I think that uh, with the changing of times it's kind of just gonna naturally come more into play um, cities like Missoula have buskers on every corner you know and I think that the acceptance of uh, art in any form being able to be shown or played on the streets is, is huge to me. So I'd like to see that happen. I think that we should have the right to play music downtown and do our thing. You know? I think it's awesome. It's really cool to see uh, different musicians from around town, um, from outside of town, you know, um, different forms of artwork, seeing paints, paintings from different artists and the spoken word pieces in between are amazing. It, it's it's cool to have that big of an art, art culture basis and it not being just a music thing and it not just being a painting thing, but it's all of the art culture, you know. It's really cool. Nice to see that all come I'm together. I'm driven now. I'm, I'm totally driven. I, I didn't think that it was something that was, not that it wasn't something that I can do because I know I can play, like I could always kind of play. The 406 Club shutting down was a huge thing for me. It forced me to build up 
a sound that I could take to other venues, you know, I couldn't just go play shitty covers of horrible acoustic songs, you know, at any venue, and it, it kind of put pep in my step, I was just, I was just starting to uh, play uh, my upright at the 406 Club before it shut down, and that, I'd already kind of started to get a feel for it, but once it shut down, it was like, all right, here we go, let's go now, you know, and getting my upright in general was a huge change. It it was like I finally found something that fit properly, you know, and, and if you're not playing the right instrument, you don't have the right drive, and once I once I picked up the upright, it, it really, it's really driven me a lot. Suffocating on the air you've given me Just to find some room to breathe Cause I'm not your baby and you don't own me So put your wallet away and quit flashing your money
Thank you.